Westwood just unveiled a humanoid robot that can run at 10 kilometers per hour, balance on rough terrain, and react 1,000 times per second. Meanwhile, 1X is showing off a robot that loads dishwashers, picks up leaves, and places pillows completely on its own. These aren't just flashy demos. This is the next phase of robotics, and it's moving fast. Let's start with Westwood Robotics Themis 5-2. This thing stands around 5 feet 3 inches tall. Picture a life-sized robot that's pretty close to your height if you're of average stature. One major headline feature is its 40 degrees of freedom, which means it can bend and twist in 40 different ways. The arms have six degrees of freedom each, and the hands, or end effectors, bump that number up by seven for finer movements. It's a second-generation model, so Westwood clearly built upon their first iteration to make it more fluid and capable. One reason it's become so fluid is that they upgraded the arms, giving them better articulation so the robot can handle tasks that require a good amount of dexterity, like carefully picking up objects. Now under the hood, Themis Fear 2 features something called B-A-R-E actuators, which stands for Back Drivable Electromechanical Actuator for Robotics. The back drivable part means it can smoothly move a joint in both directions, without that jerky mechanical motion you sometimes see in older robots. It makes the movements more lifelike and, importantly, safer when operating around humans or delicate objects. If the robot accidentally bumps you, it doesn't feel like getting whacked by a car door. It's more controlled with enough awareness to sense resistance and adjust accordingly. Powering all that brainy stuff is the robot's AI computing capability, which apparently cranks out around 200 TOPS. That's tera operations per second. In plainer language, that's a ton of computing horsepower. Because of this serious processing ability, the robot can run advanced machine learning algorithms right on board, letting it respond more quickly to changes in its environment. Speaking of changes in the environment, it also has a neat little gadget for balance and motion tracking. The 3DMCB7A HRS sensor from MicroStrain by HBK. That sensor basically makes sure the robot knows exactly how it's tilting or turning, up to 1,000 times every second. Picture it almost like an inner ear on steroids, giving the robot a constant stream of orientation data so it can handle uneven surfaces, stairs, or any random obstacle that might pop up. Combine that with the Robot Operating System, ROS, and you get a super flexible software framework that allows developers to teach the robot new skills or tweak how it behaves in specific scenarios. Westwood claims their new humanoid can walk about as fast as a typical human, and they've even clocked it running up to 10 kilometers per hour, which is roughly 6.2 miles per hour. So if you decide to go for a jog, this robot could technically keep pace. They've been showing off some of its more extreme moves, like running, maybe even trying out a little parkour, or jumping over low obstacles. The big takeaway is that they're designing this machine to handle real-world situations, not just theoretical test labs. If it's truly stable when the floor gets a bit rough or when it has to pivot quickly, that's a huge step forward in humanoid robotics. While Westwood focuses on a super-capable humanoid that looks poised for tasks anywhere from industrial environments to more personal applications, there's also one X's robot called Neo, which is being aimed straight at your home. The vice president of AI at 1X has been posting online about how Neo is picking up leaves, loading dishwashers, and even rearranging pillows on a couch. Now, maybe that sounds mundane. Oh, it's just picking up leaves, big deal. But it's actually pretty significant to see a robot autonomously spot leaves, scoop them up, and drop them into a bag without a remote operator. Autonomy is the magic word, folks. It's easy to show off a slick video of a robot moving around if someone behind the scenes is controlling it, but 1X claims that Neo is actually doing these tasks all on its own, making decisions in real time based on what it sees, how it's positioned, and where objects are located. One of their demo videos shows Neo working on what is arguably one of the most annoying chores in any household, loading the dishwasher. It picks up a cup, transfers it from one hand to the other, aligns it with the dishwasher rack, and then places it in there. It might not sound super flashy, but think about how many tiny calculations go into that. 
figuring out the shape of the cup, ensuring it's not too slippery, orienting it so it fits in the right slot, and making sure the robot itself stays balanced while bending over. In the video, the dishwasher was already open, and the cup was just sitting there, so it wasn't exactly reinventing the wheel. But it's a perfect example of the baby steps, or should I say, robot steps, needed to tackle the chaos of a home environment. Another scenario they showcased was the robot walking over to a couch, picking up a cushion, and placing it down neatly. It's pretty interesting to watch it keep its balance while leaning forward with the cushion, especially given that the cushion itself is soft and somewhat unwieldy. Anyone who's tried to get a toddler to place a pillow in a corner without toppling over might appreciate how many balancing corrections are needed. The 1X team emphasizes that these examples, while relatively straightforward, illustrate the complexity of real-life tasks. Homes are messy and unpredictable. You've got rugs, pets, children running around, and furniture that's never exactly where you left it. To perform tasks effectively, a robot has to handle all those variables without getting jammed up when something changes unexpectedly. According to the 1X Vice President of AI, everything you see in their demos is driven by data and a comprehensive network that controls full body motions, from the lower body to the arms and the spine joints. And they're using reinforcement learning, RL, for the lower body, merging that with the rest of the system to achieve graceful movements. He even draws parallels to the idea that a robust consumer solution, which in this case means for everyday household tasks, can ultimately generate extremely valuable data for training more advanced general purpose intelligence. It's the same kind of argument that Tesla has used for its self-driving program. The more data you collect on ordinary roads with average users, the better your AI becomes at handling all those weird corner cases. If you try to confine your robot or your AI to some very specialized and controlled space, you might not get enough diverse data to level up the intelligence as quickly. This is why 1X is specifically gunning for the home environment first. They're calling it the final boss of robotics because it's an absolutely unstructured environment full of a never-ending list of tasks. If a company tries to tackle robotics in smaller, narrower contexts, like a warehouse where everything's neatly arranged and predictable, that might sound easier at first. But ironically, you can end up in a situation where you're not exposing your AI to enough variety. In a home, one moment the robot might need to pick up a piece of laundry, and the next it has to deal with the pet dog wandering into the room. Or it might have to open a jar of pasta sauce, then realize that the jar's lid is stuck and needs extra force. Those little scenarios provide an avalanche of new data, training the AI to handle unplanned events. The argument is that a highly unstructured environment could speed up the development of a general intelligence by constantly challenging the robot with fresh tasks. The folks at 1X are being real about where things stand. They're not claiming their robot, Neo, can jump from loading the dishwasher to doing laundry without hiccups. It's not there yet. But the idea is to let the robot keep trying, make mistakes, and learn from them. Just like how AI models improve by collecting tons of data over time. They even compare it to self-driving. Structured environments like highways don't give you enough challenges to grow. Homes, on the other hand, are chaotic, which actually helps the robot get smarter faster. So yeah, between Westwood's Themis Vive 2, packed with serious hardware, sensors, and AI muscle, and Neo, which is out here doing leaf pickup and placing couch cushions on its own, we're seeing major steps toward robots that can handle real life. It's still early, but these are the kind of breakthroughs that could one day give us general purpose robots that do way more than just vacuum. The future's coming fast, and it's looking pretty wild. First, consider the speed of advancement. Just a few years ago, humanoid robots were clunky, slow, and barely able to walk without tripping over themselves. Now we've got machines like Westwood's Themis, Faith Harbor 2, running at human speeds, reacting in milliseconds, and handling unpredictable terrain. That's not just incremental progress, that's a leap. And it's not just about raw physical ability. The real game changer here is onboard AI processing. With 200 tera operations per second of computing power, Themis Fib 2 isn't just following pre programmed movements, it's making decisions on the fly. That means it can adapt when something unexpected happens, like a sudden obstacle in its path 
or a change in the weight of an object it's carrying. This is where we start seeing the difference between automation and true autonomy. Automation is a factory robot bolted to the floor, repeating the same task perfectly a million times. Autonomy is a robot that can walk into your house, see a mess, and figure out how to clean it up without a human telling it what to do step by step. And that's exactly what One X's Neo is trying to achieve. By focusing on home environments, they're tackling one of the hardest challenges in robotics. Think about it. A factory is a controlled space. Everything is where it's supposed to be. But a home, it's chaos. Furniture gets moved, objects are left in random places, pets and kids run around unpredictably. If a robot can handle that, it can handle almost anything. That's why One X's approach is so interesting. They're not just building a robot that does chores, they're building a robot that learns by doing. Every time Neo picks up a cup or rearranges a pillow, it's gathering data, refining its movements, and getting better at handling new situations. This is the same principle behind self-driving cars. The more miles they drive, the smarter they get. But here's the difference. Homes are even more complex than roads. On a highway, there are rules, lanes, traffic lights, predictable behavior. In a house, there are no rules. A robot has to understand context, adapt to randomness, and figure things out on its own. And that's why reinforcement learning, RL, is such a big deal for these robots. Instead of being explicitly programmed for every possible scenario, they learn by trial and error, just like humans do. Now let's talk about real-world applications, because this isn't just about cool tech demos. Industrial work. Westwood's Themis. Fei 2 isn't just a research project. It's designed for real-world labor. Imagine construction sites where humanoids carry heavy materials, warehouses where they load and unload trucks, or disaster zones where they navigate rubble to search for survivors. With its ability to run, jump, and balance on rough terrain, this robot could go places where wheeled or tracked machines can't. And because it's humanoid, it can use the same tools and equipment as human workers. No need to redesign entire workspaces. Elderly and disability care. One of the most promising and often overlooked uses for humanoid robots is assistive care. An aging population means more people needing help with daily tasks, things like cooking, cleaning, or even just getting out of bed. A robot like Neo, with its ability to handle delicate objects and navigate homes, could be a game changer for independent living. Instead of relying on human caregivers who are in short supply, seniors could have a robotic assistant that helps them stay in their own homes longer. Space exploration. NASA and other space agencies have been experimenting with humanoid robots for years because sending a robot to Mars is a lot cheaper than sending a human. A robot like Themis V2, with its advanced balance and AI, could be ideal for extraterrestrial missions. It could set up habitats, conduct repairs, or even explore dangerous environments where humans can't go. Military and emergency response. This is where things get controversial, but also incredibly impactful. A humanoid robot that can run, climb, and carry heavy loads could be used for search and rescue missions in collapsed buildings or war zones. Of course, the same tech could also be weaponized, which is why companies like Westwood and One X are careful about who they partner with. But the potential for saving lives in disasters is huge. Now let's address the elephant in the room. Are these robots going to take our jobs? The short answer, yes, some of them. But here's the thing. This isn't new. Technology has been replacing human labor for centuries. The question isn't whether robots will take jobs, but what kind of jobs will be created because of them. Just like the rise of computers didn't eliminate work, it just changed it, advanced robotics will open up entirely new industries. Someone has to design, build, program, and maintain these machines. New types of jobs will emerge that we can't even imagine yet. And let's be honest, some jobs should be automated. Dangerous, repetitive, or physically taxing work is perfect for robots. If a machine can lift heavy boxes in a warehouse instead of a human risking injury, that's a win. The real challenge will be making sure the transition is smooth, retraining workers, creating safety nets, and ensuring that the benefits of automation are shared fairly. Now let's talk about the competition 
because Westwood and 1X aren't the only players in this game. Tesla's Optimus, formerly the Tesla bot, is aiming for a similar goal, a general purpose humanoid robot that can handle household and industrial tasks. Boston Dynamics has been pushing the limits of robotic mobility for years with Atlas, and companies like Agility Robotics are already testing humanoid robots in real-world warehouses. So why does Westwood's Themis 5 II stand out? Two words, speed and intelligence. Most humanoid robots today are still relatively slow. They think carefully before moving, taking cautious steps to avoid falling. Themis 5 II, with its 1000 Hertz sensor feedback and 200 TOPS AI brain, moves with confidence. It's not just walking, it's running, jumping, and recovering from slips in real time. That's a huge difference. Because in the real world, hesitation gets you knocked over. Whether it's a crowded factory floor or a messy living room, robots need to react instantly, just like humans do. And that's what makes this generation of robots different. They're not just mechanical puppets, they're thinking machines. So where does this leave us? We're at a tipping point. For decades, humanoid robots were a sci-fi fantasy. Then they became lab experiments. Now they're stepping into the real world and they're getting scary good. Themis 5, 2, and Neo are proof that the next era of robotics isn't coming. It's already here. But this is just the beginning, because once these robots start learning from each other, sharing data, and improving exponentially, things are going to move even faster. Which brings us to the biggest question of all.